Uh, as you're all aware, uh, my talks with Foreign Minister Wangi uh, has just concluded. Uh, we met for about three hours uh, and addressed a broad and substantive agenda in an open and candid manner. We discussed our bilateral relations that have been disturbed as a result of Chinese actions since April 2020. The occasion provided an opportunity to exchange views on international, on major international issues, including Afghanistan and Ukraine. Uh, we also took up some other important uh, concerns in our bilateral relationship, including education, travel, and commerce. Uh, Foreign Minister Wangi and I have been in touch with each other over the last two years, even if we have not visited each other's country. We met in Moscow in September 2020 and then again in Dushanbe in July and September 2021. We have uh, had telephonic conversations during this period. And the focus of these interactions have naturally been on the situation in our border areas. Our meeting had led to an understanding on disengagement and de-escalation. Uh, the challenge, of course, has been to implement it on the ground. Uh, we've had 15 rounds of talks between senior commanders and progress has been achieved on several friction points from the disengagement perspective. This needs to be taken forward since the completion of disengagement is necessary for discussions on de-escalation to take place. I would describe our current situation as work in progress, obviously at a slower pace than desirable, and my discussions with FM Wangi today were aimed at expediting that process. The impact of the tension in the border areas on the overall relationship has been visible in the last two years. Uh, this is only natural since peace and tranquility in the border areas have been the foundation of stable and cooperative ties. Indeed, uh, we have agreements that were designed explicitly to strengthen this foundation and prevent the kind of situation that we are seeing today. Uh, I was very honest in my discussions with Chinese Foreign Minister, especially in conveying our national sentiments on this issue. The frictions and tensions that arise from China's deployment since April 2020 cannot be reconciled with a normal relationship between two neighbors. Uh, Foreign Minister Wangi spoke about China's desire for a return to normalcy, while also referring to the larger significance of our ties. I was equally forthcoming that India wants a stable and predictable relationship, but restoration of normalcy will obviously require a restoration of peace and tranquility. If we are both committed to improving our ties, then this commitment must find full expression in ongoing disengagement talks. We had an extensive exchange of views on a number of contemporary matters. I laid out India's principled approach to international relations based on respect for international law, UN Charter, and sovereignty and territorial integrity of states. Disputes should be resolved without use or threat of use of force. Nor should there be attempts to unilaterally change the status quo. Where India and China are concerned, our relationship is best served by observing the three mutuals, mutual respect, mutual sensitivity, and mutual interests. We discussed today uh, specific regional situations insofar as Afghanistan is concerned. India's policy is guided by the UN Security Council Resolution 2593 on Ukraine. Uh, we discussed our respective approaches and perspectives, but agreed that diplomacy and dialogue must be the priority. Uh, we also spent some time on multilateral issues. I emphasized the need to take forward the long overdue reform of the UN system, including the Security Council. 
I also took up strongly the predicament of Indian students studying in China who have not been allowed to return, citing COVID restrictions. We hope that China will take a non-discriminatory approach since it involves the future of so many young people. Minister Wangi assured me that he would speak to the relevant authorities on his return on this matter. He also recognized the particular concerns that medical uh, students have uh, in this uh, difficult situation. Also on the agenda were matters pertaining to trade and investment. Uh, we continue to press for fairer market access. So uh, overall, I would say that our talks today uh, added to clarity in regard to various aspects of our bilateral relations. They also uh, provided a useful opportunity for an exchange of perspectives on international issues. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We have a paucity of time. I can see a lot of hands going up, but hold on. Uh, ground rules, please introduce yourselves before you uh, pose your question, as well as your organization. Uh, let me start from this side, perhaps. Yeah, Why you start? yeah we will take a few rounds. Yeah. Microphone, please. Good afternoon, sir. Sridhar from the Asian Age and Technical Chronicle. Uh, my question is, uh, so after the talks, did you get a sense that uh, the Chinese are willing to vacate uh, whatever land they have grabbed in the Ladakh sector in uh, areas, friction areas other than Pangongso? And what was uh, Mr. Bangi's uh, response? Uh, are you hopeful that uh, now the logjam will finally be broken? Thank you. That side, please. Minister Jayashankar, I'm Parikshit from CNBC TV 18. Wanted to ask you about the discussions on Ukraine. Uh, you said that both sides discussed each other's perspectives. Uh, were there any similarities in how the two sides would approach the situation in the days to come? Sir, my TV9 Bharat Parishad. Sir, my question is whether uh, you have discussed something related to Quad and then what was his reaction? Take one side. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll take this four side. Okay. Jai Shankar, if I could ask you if uh, the subject of a return to the status quo uh, ante as in April 2020 came up in your talks, um, uh, what would be the, the point at which you would think that normalcy uh, has returned? And it seems as if your conversations have been on every part of the bilateral relationship, trade, uh, travel, you've discussed multilateral issues, the UN Security Council reform. Would this be then a, a sort of return to normalcy in bilateral talks? So should I hand over to you or take another? No, no, okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I'll, close I'll, I'll deal with this. and. Uh, uh, so, uh, let me, in a sense, where there's an overlap of a question, uh, answer it once. So, uh, a first issue is the situation uh, in the border areas. You know, as I said in my opening statement, uh, uh, we have uh, still uh, ongoing friction areas. We've also made a lot of progress uh, in resolving some other uh, friction areas and Pangongso uh, was uh, uh, is notable uh, in that regard. So essentially our discussion uh, today uh, was uh, to uh, how to take this forward. Now you all know that uh, the senior military commanders have been meeting, there have been 15 rounds. Uh, in fact uh, Naveen here has been attending those meetings as well. Uh, now uh, the point is that uh, so long as uh, there are uh, very large deployments uh, uh, in the border areas uh, which uh, are uh, uh, violative of the 1993 and 96 agreements. Uh, uh, the, clearly the border uh, area situation is not normal. So the main point which again I have spelt out uh, at some length in my statement is we have a situation where peace and tranquility in the border areas has been disturbed. So the situation there is not normal. 
the situation there is not normal if peace and foundation tranquility is the foundation uh, of uh, you know the uh, basis of how we are going forward then obviously that is also disturbed so the uh, answer in that sense is if you ask me uh, is is our relationship normal today my answer to you is no it is not uh, and it cannot be normal if the situation in the border areas is abnormal and surely the presence of a large number of troops there uh, in contravention of agreements is abnormality uh, the second uh, uh, issue how hopeful am i well you know uh, we've had uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, minister wangi and i myself we've had meetings before uh, and there've been talks uh, in parallel not only the senior military commanders but also we've had i think eight eight meetings of the wmcc which is the working mechanism uh, dealing with this issue so they have made considerable progress i i don't dispute that in fact i welcome that but they haven't sorted out the issue in entirety so our effort is today to sort out the issue in entirety and deal with the disengagement so that it then allows us to look at the de escalation uh, possibilities uh regarding uh ukraine uh well uh, you know i would say my most uh, uh, uh sort of uh, accurate characterization would be that uh, you know mr wangi presented the chinese understanding the chinese view of uh, uh, the developed situation there and the developments pertaining to it and i presented the indian view uh i think uh, the indian view many of you heard me may have heard me speak about it yesterday in parliament as well uh and uh, obviously i mean what he said was his view and what i said was my view uh, but where we had a common element was that both of us agreed on the uh, importance of an immediate ceasefire as well as a return to diplomacy and dialogue uh in so far as aapka jo sawal tha ki quad quad ka vishay hamare talks mein unhone baat uthai ya nahi nahi baat nahi uthi to quad pe koi baat cheet nahi hui so we'll take another sir akhilesh from there on the left sir so uh, i am akhilesh suman from sansad tv before coming to india uh, mr wangi had made a statement about jammu and kashmir that was very objectionable from our point of view so did you raise this question to him that when we don't uh, talk about uh, tibet and other issues inside china why does he raise such issues and did you raise the issue of uh, situation in indo pacific also to him so here the side okay sure. sir this is mukesh kaushik from daring bhaskar uh after 3 hours of talk with uh, mr wang how hopeful you are that uh, prime minister modi would be able to visit uh, peijing for brics summit and did he extend uh, invitation for mr modi to come to brics uh, there was one more hand that's it sadant please so sidhant from beyond the question is was uh, terrorism emanating from pakistan discussed during the talks uh, today also uh, has the chinese side extended invite for the meeting they are hosting on afghanistan the foreign ministers meeting in beijing and the last question that's it uh, who was that? yeah ie mahasadiki from cnn news 18 here sir straight back mahasadiki from cnn news 18 Uh, so the visit uh, was significant since you've already laid out the details for us why was it then not announced before he came here and uh, has any timeline been set for disengagement and uh, uh, de escalation so that the prime minister can then engage at his level at the brics summit so should i okay thanks thank you uh so uh akhilesh ji your question uh did the issue of what minister wangi said at the oic uh, conference come up uh, yes it did uh i referred to it uh 
uh, I explained to him why we found that statement uh, objectionable. Uh, so uh, it was a uh, subject discussed at some length. Uh, uh, there was a larger context as well. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I conveyed that uh, uh, we hoped that uh, China would follow an independent policy in respect of India and not allow its policies to be influenced by other countries and other relationships. Uh, so that was that context. Indo-Pacific, no, uh, you know, again, I mean, I referred previously to the court question, but Indo-Pacific itself didn't come up uh, in our discussions. Uh, then uh, regarding uh, the uh, visit, uh, 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 the question of invitation to the BRICS, uh, yes, uh, China, uh, uh, Foreign Minister Wang Yi, and I discussed the Chinese uh, chair, chairing of the BRICS, uh, and uh, they uh, spoke about, obviously about hosting a summit uh, at which uh, they would uh, like, the, naturally, the participation of uh, all the leaders. Uh, but uh, uh, that was, uh, you know, uh, in response to the last question, uh, which uh, I think uh, Maha Siddiqui raised, there was no timeline, you know, there was no, in the sense, uh, um, that was a discussion. Uh, there, was a, there was a parallel but separate discussion in regard to sorting out the situation in the border areas. Uh, regarding the uh, Siddhant, your question on terrorism from Pakistan, uh, it did uh, come up uh, in terms of uh, my uh, sharing with him what is an Indian view of the uh, concerns that we have in respect uh, of Pakistan and of course uh, what uh, were some of the uh, uh, positions taken during the OIC uh, meeting. Uh, on the uh, Afghanistan meeting which the Chinese are uh, uh, convening which I, I believe, uh, no they did not, uh, they have not invited us. I think can we? Oh yes, yes sorry. Uh, well, the question uh, on the visit itself. Uh, look, uh, typically uh, to announce a visit, uh, uh, it's done by mutual uh, convenience, uh, and uh, uh, for whatever reason, the Chinese uh, did not uh, want uh, this set of visits which Mr. Wangi did uh, to to be announced earlier. So since we did not have mutual uh, agreement, we did not uh, make our uh, announcement either. Thank you very much, sir, for, your, for taking the time to answer the questions. I appreciate it, sir. Also, thank you, Foreign Secretary, sir, for your presence, as well as traditional Secretary, East Asia. Thank you thank all you. for joining thank us today. Thank you all.